All right, everybody. Welcome to a Wednesday edition of Seven Minutes of Saints, your daily Saints can Saints podcast destination. Uh, Andrew, this one's free as always because of SeatGeek. Guys, download the SeatGeek app and use the code ACAA, and you get twenty dollars off your first purchase. They have the best app for buying tickets anywhere for shows, concert, games. Their app, green light means it's a good deal. Yellow light means it's a okay deal. Red light means it's a poor deal. Seeky, they have everything you want as far as ticket buying. Uh, and again, use the code ACAA and get $20 off your first purchase. Seeky, life's an event. We have the tickets. All right, Andrew, today we want to talk about who's more valuable to the Saints, and we're going to debate these a couple until training camp starts. We're going to take positions and different things. But to, to kick this uh, segment off, this, this, these, these set of shows, we're going to debate who's more valuable, Thomas Morstead or Will Lutz. And you, oh! woo, you brought up this topic, and I was like, oh, man, that was easy. And then I started thinking about it. It got really hard because cause my thing is, like, value is, like, how I judge value is, like, when they're gone. Like, then what happens? So, I, I debated this one for a long time. I went back, surprisingly, I went back and forth, back and forth. Who did you decide was more valuable? Well, first of all, if you look at career, and I apologize in advance, I'm driving my car and I'm doing this on Bluetooth, so if the audio blows, the audio blows. Hopefully, hopefully in the recording it'll sound good. But, um, you know, I, I just feel like, if you're going to look at their career, it's, then it's a no-brainer. It's Morstead because, like, you know, there's Ambush, and he, he made a Pro yeah. Bowl, and he's an all-time punter. And, I mean, he, Mor- Morstead's a beast. And off the field, obviously, Morstead is arguably more valuable than any guy on the team. So I think Morstead means so much to us, and I think that's why a lot of people at face value would, would think this is really obvious. But remember now, Lutz, is the one that does the kickoffs now, first of all. And yeah. he's automatic on touchbacks, and that used to be Morstead. So, like, you know, when Morstead was the punter and the kickoff man, like, he, he was kind of pulling double duty. Well, now Lutz is the guy doing that. So that's the first thing. The second thing is, like, man, I just feel like if you ask any NFL coach, would you ra- – and the Saints have both of these. They have a lockdown punter and a lockdown kicker. But if you were to ask coaches – would you prefer to be shaky at kicker or shaky at punter? They would say every day and twice on Sunday, give me the shitty punter. I want a kicker that makes field goals. Because at the end of the day, success and failure is measured by who scored the most points, and a kicker is directly responsible for points being on the board. So when you look at Lutz, and I would say right now Lutz performs as well at kicker as Morstead does at punter, I – I would keep Lutz over Morstead. Yeah, I mean, I viewed it a different way. I came to the same conclusion, so maybe this podcast will be boring to people. But I came to the same conclusion a different way. I look at it this way. If you told me in August, if God or a football demon, whatever, and said, look, Thomas Morstead or Lutz, one of them has to break their leg today, and you're not going to have them for the whole year. I would have to pick Lutz because even though Morstead is amazing, and if the Saints, if Morstead had broken his leg in August and the Saints were a fucking disaster at punter, and I mean the worst in the league and it was a disaster, it would be terrible. And it probably would cost them a game, right? Because you need, you'd have, you're going to have those moments where you need a booming punt from Morstead or you need him to pin him back late in the game to set up the defense to win or whatever. And you miss more said the dude was shanking and the Saints would lose a game. And it probably cost them a game. But, man, if Lutz got injured in August, Andrew, and, you know, there's a lot. Of, sometimes on free agent kickers you could find them in there and you find a good one and it's fine and, and everything's okay. But, man, if the Saints had to cycle through bad kickers because Lutz either fell off a cliff or whatever or got injured, man, a bad kicker, that'll turn your fucking – Eleven and five to nine and seven, and you're sitting home in January. Or twelve, yeah, it'll, I mean, tell, eight, or it'll tell twelve and four to ten and six. And oh, by the way, instead of a bye, you play in the first week and it's on the road. Like it's just, it's just, it's just more value. And that's not saying, and that it, that I thought this long and hard about this decision 
says so much about Morstead, how great he is. Yeah. That this isn't a that this isn't a thirty second podcast and we're done. It's it it speaks to how great Morstead is. But still, you gotta I, I gotta go kicker here. Yeah, you got to. And and the thing is, you, you said it like that. I think punting can cost you a game or two. And kicking could cost you as many as four or five. I mean, there's so many games where in the final two minutes, there's a critical kick that makes or breaks the game. And, I mean, you look at this season, the Browns game, the Ravens game. I mean, the Saints were on the winning. Remember how we kept talking about how it was a season of kicking luck. And part of the reason why it was a season of kicking luck was because luck was never missing. You know, and the Saints were on the right side of that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, at the end of the day, man, he's a guy, and I mean, I feel bad because more stuff's amazing, but that's the reality. Yeah, and I mean, look, you know, and a lot of times we you focus on kickers, you focus on we as fans, you focus on on kicks in the last couple of minutes that win or lose games, right? And he's like, oh, he missed a kick with ten seconds left and they lost or whatever, you know. But a lot of times it's kicks too to close out games or change scores. For example. Lutz, this is a bad one for everybody, but he missed the kick against the Eagles, right? It would have made the game 23-14 to 14 with two minutes ago. That game would have been locked down and over. Instead, Lattimore had to make the pick to win the game. Or it's a kick late in the game where instead of being up three, you kick the field goal and you're up six. So now the team's like, oh, we got a minute 45 left. Instead of going down and kicking a field goal to win this game and tie this game, get into overtime or score a touchdown and win, we got to score a touchdown to win or tie. It changes yeah. the complexities of everything. So I just think fans, for kickers, it's just so difficult. When, you, when I mean, we went through the bag. We've, on, Sean Payton has, has, has signed as many kickers almost as he's been years for the Saints as coach, man. I mean, I listen, everyone remembers the kicker horror story. Everyone remembers Scott Norwood. Everyone remembers Gonzalez with the Browns and how that game went this past season. You know, Cody Parkey with the Bears and his – terrible miss. Like, everyone remembers that stuff. But no one remembers the punter in his shitty, his shitty game. No yeah. one remembers that. And I'll, and I'll give you another one for Lutz. You know, as horrible as the Saints season have ended the last two years with the, fuck, the, the, bull, the bullshit call in the NFC Championship game and the Minnesota disaster with Diggs, you know, those two plays were able to happen because Lutz was super clutch. Yeah, the field goal against the Rams was a, was a chip shot field goal. But, hey, it was still, you know, at the end of the game, it was still to put the, give the Saints the lead. And if he'd have missed it, the Rams would have gone down. And instead of going to overtime, they'd have just fucking won the game, right? And against Minnesota, I believe that was like a 43-yarder to, to put him ahead. And Minnesota had like 20 seconds left. So Lutz has, has not only been really good statistics-wise – but in sort of the big moments where you measure kickers, he's a made guy now. Like he, I have total confidence when he when when they trot out Lutz for a forty five yard field goal in the end, and it's big and it's games on the line. Like I'm, I'm like he's making this. Like yeah. that's the confidence I feel in him. And I think of all the bad things that have happened to the Saints, of the way their seasons have ended the last two years, of all of it. And I know it's not a big deal, but it sort of gets swept under the rug. Is the last two years, like, Lutz is a made guy now. Like, the Saints have complete and utter confidence in, in him if the contract they gave him, if you, if you still had any doubts after that. So, I mean, it's, it's tough. But, but final thought, Andrew, I want, and then we'll get out of here. The Saints special teams, they've invested so much in them this year. I think they potentially can be better than last year. And the Saints curb stomp team in the special teams department almost every single week. Yeah, that's a scary. Well, the fact that we're even having this conversation that someone on this phase of the game might be more valuable than Morstead, I mean, first of all, that says it all, right? <laughs> and, and so, I, I mean, just from a talent perspective, you know, we, we had a podcast where we talked about maybe Hardy and Banjo's roster spots aren't guaranteed because of how much competition they're bringing in and, you know, mm-hmm. these new coaches and everything. So they're obviously taking it seriously. Um, and, and Sean Payton said this uh, in a press conference recently. He said, yeah, you know, we're, we're, ha- we're real excited about our special teams. He said, you know, the one thing that I wasn't happy with last year is our return game. He said, I thought our coverage units were outstanding. Our punting, kicking was great. But he said the one thing was just our, uh, our uh, return game wasn't good, and that's why we went out and got this guy. And so I think when you look at uh, Cheryl's, 
uh, being added, Marcus Sherrill's the, the return man, mm-hmm. and you know the Saints maybe adding some emphasis in that part of the game. If they can get their return game going, I think that's the final missing piece to really making the Saints the best special teams unit in all of football. Yeah. So this is amazing considering how bad their special teams were for a decade. So anyway, everybody, this episode is free because of SeatGeek, but you really need to sign up and sign up at your $7 a month level so you can get it every day. Or if you sign up just at the $3.28 level on Patreon, you get a free koozie. So it's amazing. So do it, and we will talk to you on Thursday.